Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I got an A star in A level maths and I worked really hard for it because I had to get it. I got an offer for chemistry at Oxford and it was A star, A star, A with an A star in mathematics. So I definitely put, I would say I put in the most work into maths because I needed the A star and I got it. It was quite a high A star. I was 50 marks above the grey boundary. So yeah, I'm here to share with you guys how you can get one too. So first I would say is to understand what's going on in the lessons. If you don't, it's just gonna make life so difficult. So make sure that you ask questions and you pay attention in lesson. That's the first step. If you don't get it, you won't be able to even attempt. You, you can't, with maths, it's numbers. You can't waffle. So you literally need to know how to do it or you don't get the mark, simple as that. So after you learn a topic in class, then do some practice questions. So I did Edexcel maths and there were actually some really good Edexcel textbooks. They had the information and then exercises under it. The exercises usually started easy and then they built up and they got harder and they had problem solving questions and exam practice questions. So depending on how well you understood the topic and the examples, you can move straight on to exam practice or maybe start off with the easier ones if it's a bit of a more challenging topic but it's important to do the questions and it's important to do them right after you learn them. I honestly think maths is kind of like muscle memory so you don't really memorize content but you do the questions and then your brain remembers how to do them. Like I don't really know if that makes sense. If you do the questions while the content is still fresh it's going to leave a bigger impact in your brain and it will make you less likely to forget it because if you forget it once you're going to have to relearn it before doing questions again. So usually if your teacher sets homework, make sure you do the homework. And I know a lot of people in my year, because basically our homework was like, do the questions and then mark it yourself. So some people would just like copy the solutions of the solution bank, but don't do that because like at the end of the day, it's not helping anyone. Like doing that is literally not benefiting you at all. So just do the work, you know? So usually after the lesson, good practice is to come home and do the homework. And that way it really cements and is really gonna identify whether you have any problems so you can fix them right away. So yeah, if you're doing a question you have and you get it wrong, make sure you learn how to do it. Ask a teacher, me, I would ask my friends who did like further maths because they were really good at maths. Shout out to Fatiha, my best friend, who's she's she was she's so good at maths and she helped me so much. And shout out to Peter. Peter as well. I used to send Peter, so I bombarded Peter's WhatsApp. I was in his inbox, literally, I was there. If I needed help, I just sent it to him and I'm so blessed that he was willing to help me. So find people that can help you. And then one thing I would do was if it was a really big question, like make sure to redo a question, like re either redo that question or do a question similar to it to make sure that you actually learned. Whenever we had topic tests, you know, tests at school, assessments, obviously revise for them really hard. A website I used was Nicromaths because they had like the like topic booklets so they would like compile questions topic by topic. So the topics that I was weaker I would do the Nicromaths booklets. I know Nicromaths is just like Excel, but I know that PMT also has other exam boards so literally just doing questions after questions after questions that's just getting just having more exposure to different types of questions you know so that when you get to your exam you can do basically most of the questions that they'll throw at you because there's only there's a, there's a limited range to the kind of questions they can ask you. They can't go beyond that, do you know what I mean? So the more questions you do and the more questions you're exposed to, the more likely you are to do well on the real thing. So yeah, make sure that any questions you can't do, you make sure that you get them sorted out on the spot or else you might forget about them. So basically, right, these tips that I'm giving you, I didn't really follow them that well in year 12. Then when it came to the end of year 12 exams, I wasn't really where I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to get an A, which is the highest grade you can get in AS. But I would say I wasn't getting that high. I was getting like 60%, like maybe like a B like kind of level. So I really wanted to boost my grade and get like high A's. In the end of year 12 exams, I scored the highest in my whole year group for maths. And my year group was like 500 people and I would say definitely over half of us did maths in year 12. I don't know the exact number but I would say 300 at least did maths and I topped the year group. I got like 97% maybe overall. 
I got really high in those exams and I wasn't getting that high throughout the year. So what so what did I do? Obviously, any topics that I was weak at that I knew, okay, I don't really get this too much, I did the question packs, I did the booklets. I started off with the easier questions and worked my way up to the exam practice so that you know I definitely understood the topic deeply. Then I started doing full papers. I started doing full AS papers and also just like you know old spec papers and yeah I would just do them and any paper that I got below 70% so that was kind of like my threshold below 70% I would redo the whole paper so I would wait usually like one two days so I'd obviously mark it learn how to do it like write the corrections and then two days later I would redo the whole paper you know it's good to kind of redo the ones that you've done before just to make sure that you know you know how to do them and also seeing the ones that you got wrong to make sure that, that you've actually learned from them and doing it again in exam conditions that's what i did so yeah if i got below 70 again obviously redo it until i got up above 70 and then i just did more and more papers i was just doing papers after papers marking them redoing it just mark, i had like a little spreadsheet so i'll put this put what i got put this put what i got and eventually i was getting getting better so when it came to those exams I didn't actually do that many papers because I was redoing some so obviously that takes a lot of time it's better to do like less papers and redo the ones that you did quite badly in than to do a bunch of papers and just like hastily mark them and then just move on to the next move on to the next move on to the next because you're not actually learning from your mistakes what you need to do is make sure that you learn from your mistakes so if I got below 70 I would like mark the paper, correct it, redo it, and then hopefully if I've, if I've redone it, I'm usually getting above 80 now. So it's really showing me that I've learned from my mistakes, you know? And then chances are, in a future paper, the question that I got wrong will be, like the new questions will be similar to the ones that I got wrong. And I've properly learned from that paper now. So I have a better chance at this new one, as opposed to if I just did the paper, marked it wrote the solution and then moved on maybe i would have done around the same in the second one or slightly higher because i haven't really cemented what i've learned here but if i do this paper i do below i get below 70 i didn't do that well i redo the whole paper so that i properly and make sure i understand each question then i move on i'm gonna do much better in that second paper now because i really sucked the juice out of this first one so this method is a bit time consuming I was doing like two, three papers a day, like for those year 12 exams, I was revising so hard, but it paid off. I literally topped the year, like, do you know what I mean? So that's what I would recommend you to do. Just if you can, if you can do this earlier than when I did it, it will benefit you more. So that's what I was doing. I went into year 13, the content got a bit harder, like definitely parametric equations, differentiation, integration. I remember when we first started learning integration, we learned, we went through the whole thing and like the whole chapter is a very long chapter, but then when I was doing some questions like from Nichromat, I was realizing I'm, I'm taking forever to do these questions. I don't really know what to do. So what I did, I took the matters into my own hand and I went back to the beginning. I read the textbook again and I started doing the questions like the easy, I started from exercise 1A, the really easy questions, and I built my way up. Integration, I struggle with it a lot. So there's no point in jumping to the exam practice ones. Just make sure it's important to have a very strong, solid foundation. So I started with easy questions and I built my way up. I did so many integration questions, so many integration questions so that when it came, because integration takes up a lot of marks. You know, I remember in the real A-level where there was a 13 marker parametric integration, like it took up a lot of marks. So it was really all that time and all those hours that I put into learning it from, I went through each chapter, I combed through the questions in each chapter. So when it came to the real thing, my pen was just moving because obviously I'd done it so much. Maths requires a lot of practice, so much practice. Literally for my A-level maths, I was doing, I did all the A-level maths papers. I did the mock set papers. I did the specimen papers. I did, I did the locked papers. These papers, some of these papers, you need teachers, like the only teachers have access to it. So the teachers um, at my school gave them to us, but if they don't, ask your teachers because there are more papers than just what they put on the website so email your teachers ask them to give you access to the lock papers to the specimen to the mock set papers i was doing paper after paper i was going to the library i'll do one paper mm. next paper mm. literally that's what i was doing 
so yeah it's just about practice with math that's all you can really do with it i found the ed excel textbook to be quite good so sometimes if let's say I, I thought i understood it in class i came back later and i'm doing a question and i didn't get it i would go through the textbook so actually read it and yeah that really helped me especially mechanics like i remember ladder like ladders question those those like big 12 markers yeah oh my days i used to resolving the tension the friction like when it's at at that angle like and the the wall is rough and the floor is rough and you have to do friction in two places all oh my days it used to get so much for me i remember even saying to my friend Soraya, i don't know if i'm gonna get good at this but i did every question in the textbook for that topic just because i struggled with it so much and it was even doing so many questions and i found that I just was I just kept making mistakes so I took a break from it for a few days and then I came back so I started again I did ladders question did them did them did them for starts I actually made some notes I made some flashcards just to mem just to memorize the stuff for like large data set because we had to do that for edX how you literally needed to learn like what the climate was like in certain places like you had to memorize it so i did flashcards i put flashcards on Anki for stats and like the mechanics modeling assumptions like oh um, what is meant by the assumption that the rod is light or the rod is straight or whatever like you know just I memorized that and then just practiced that's pretty much all I did for maths and I put in a lot of work and I got the A star these are my tips for A level maths for getting an A star and A level maths I was really adamant on getting this because obviously it was required in my offer and yeah I hope this video was helpful I know A level maths is quite hard but you can do it with practice you can definitely you know make a lot of improvements in a short period of time um if you just put in the work so yeah if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like share it with your friends and family or well, yeah friends and family anyone who's doing a level math or is gonna do it or whatever share it with them also leave a comment down below if this video helped you if you have any other questions and subscribe to my channel i will see you guys in my next one bye